Okay, first order of business. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen, Sunderland Select Board. Old habits dry. Doesn't bother oh. me. Okay. Huh? Doesn't bother me. I'm not offended. I know, but we changed the law. Uh, of the Sunderland Select Board, it's October 3rd, 2022. Please call to order at 633. First order of business is approval of the minutes of September 19th. I motion we approve the minutes of September 19th. I second that. Sorry. And we have a second for approval of the minutes. Any discussion about the minutes? Without hearing any discussion of the minutes, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Hmm. This is interesting. It's not coming up. Yeah, it's not coming up for any of us. Do you okay. want me to pull anything up on the screen? We have, this is as far as I can get as soon as I click on a file. Oh. All righty. Good thing I have the, uh, next up is the appointment of Jeff Belanger as full-time police officer chief. Thank you. Uh, thank you board for having us. Uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, Jeff Belanger. He currently works at the Leverett police department full-time. Uh, he did apply and, uh, the full-time staff had an interview, uh, in August. And they then brought his name forward for second round of interviews, which I then had with him. We've had some discussions since then, and he's uh, conditionally accepted the conditional offer of, uh, of uh, full time, pending, of course, the appointment tonight. Uh, Jeff has had, uh, I believe, around eight years of police experience already. Uh, the past three years full time with the town of Leverett Police Department. Uh, he has worked with our department on uh, in those three years. Um, many different officers, so he's, he's well versed in not just the geography because he actually went to be the preschool that kindergarten here and grew up in the area, but he um, knows the area because he's worked with the police officers uh, and the staff is excited to have him. I'm excited to have uh, Jeff come on. Um, I think he's going to be a great fit. Uh, the town was very gracious in offering us the, uh, the new full-time position. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. And uh, I think Jeff's going to be able to slide right in there. And you know, we'll, we'll do the field training as needed um, and get through that in the next couple of weeks after he's out from Leverett and starts with us. Um, and then they're expecting him to start uh, by the end of the month, uh, doing his own calls and doing his own shifts and going forward from there. So Chief, when you were looking to hire, what were you looking for? So, so many things have changed with uh, the MPTC and policing with post and the requirements. So we had posted a position, um, nothing in the job description says it had to have a full-time academy certificate, but obviously that would be given um, probably more priority than anything else because the person already has the academy, is probably already working somewhere. Uh, so it's a little bit less of a headache to try to put somebody through the training. Um, we were also potentially going to uh, accept people who wanted to put applications in, if they were uh, not trained, uh, if they had not gone to the academy, or if they were bridge certified, which is something that just recently mm -hmm. happened uh, as of last year. Uh, thankfully, Jeff wanted to come here and has the academy. Uh, like I said, works well with the other officers and did well on the interview. So we, that's why we elevated him up. So, so Chief, your you're, um, part-timers, you still have eight, six? six? Now, are, and they need to go by alphabetical to, alphabetical. to so Bridge a, Academy, right? A through H finished. Uh, we, all of our A through H uh, have all been either conditionally certified or fully certified. The last one uh, that we're waiting to hear back on received an extension uh, into September because the state didn't have enough instructors for the emergency vehicle operations course. So because he finished everything else, they bumped him back he just finished that at the end of September. All of his paperwork has been submitted to the state, so we're just waiting for that final uh, change from conditional certification to full certification. Um, and then we have no one in year two, which is the year we're in right now. And then we have two more officers who start July one uh, for year three. So, Chief, do you have do you do you see a p potential problem hiring part timers going forward? Uh, it's not just me, it's the entire yeah. state, anyone that uses it. Uh, so there, there really isn't any part-time academies going forward. There is, uh, uh, I think, well, Worcester right now, that's a lengthy one. But uh, there's a lot of officers, especially in Franklin County, who work multiple departments.
departments as a part-time officers. You know, we have at least two officers that work two different departments. I know other officers who work for five. Um, so we'll probably start seeing a lot of that, uh, sharing of officers, you know, they'll wear this uniform and gun here and then they'll go to another town and do that. Um, so I, I, I do believe we'll have that unneeded stress coming in the next three to five years. Um, we'll have to uh, deal with that when it comes up. So, so I guess where I'm going is, uh, so is there anything where we should start looking at working more closely with other departments to, so that you can have, so you could have, maybe it's no longer just a, a Sunderland PD, but a, a kind of like South <clears throat> County PD. I mean, there are a, a handful of departments across the state, probably less than a handful that have decided to go regional, um, but it, you have to look at the costs associated with it, where it's going to be housed, who's going to have the, who's going to be the governing body to move mm. forward. Uh, I think we're in a spot now and for the foreseeable future where we have enough officers full-time uh, as long as the call volume is not increasing and, or we're not reducing the part-time staff to deal with the uh, call volume that we have in town. And I know the board and, and, and residents in town do enjoy having that department having that responsive policing and, and being able to know who they are and, and, and being part of the community. Um, I don't see any departments trying to get away from having a police department. You have to have something, whether it's a your own or, or would be a regional type. But that's something that we'll have to maybe look at later on down the line to see if that's something that someone is interested in doing. Um, but like I said, the, the past six years I've been here, I've had nothing but you know, a great response from the board and from the staff and the citizens. So. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, and again, I, I do not disagree at all with the full-time training. And I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, because when you're in a, when you're in the patrol car, it doesn't matter if you're 40 hour a week or five hours a week, you're still in the patrol car and you still have all the same law enforcement, so I guess, I mean, it's the same. Yeah. Um, but there's no way now that people get that experience, you know, that as part-timers, part-timers got good experience. Yeah, and that's, that's why I said that there's, we already have two officers that work in multiple departments. Mm. Uh, and, I, and like I said, there's a, there's a few other officers that work for a bunch. Um, sometimes they like their full-time jobs and, and want to be able to help out the communities that they're in and, and work in multiple different departments. Uh, and sometimes people would just rather be able to have the luxury of picking when they can work and then having a week off without having benefit time or whatnot. Yep. So a lot of part-timers will be doing that. Uh, but the full-timers, you know, they'll continue to work in any department that they're in and uh, and go forward from there. Okay. Couple uh, questions on Nathaniel? that. Um, yeah. Would you prefer to have six part-timers or three full-timers? And in that respect, is, is the part-timers, is the draw of the part-timers purely filling in the gaps of the full-timers, or is it that we have certain times of the week or certain times of the year where we need more staff versus less staff? Um, well, it's, it's a myriad of all of that. The part-time uh, officers, I started part-time, Jeff started part-time, I believe all of my full-time staff started part-time somewhere in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth. Uh, the idea of having <clears throat> me, a part-time officer or a, a group of them they're able to pick up some of the scheduled shifts that don't really fall in play with the normal schedule that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have a little bit more leeway because they're not you know, working 40 hours, and if you go with 40 hours, you have overtime. Uh, historically, that doesn't normally happen. Um, and then if you have um, the need to have more officers for like we have the 300 events, we had a bunch of part-time officers assisting with us. Uh, we have detail events, things like that, uh, private duty details, Eversource, things of like companies like that that would request to hire. Um, but we, we utilize the neighboring towns for that, but when it gets to the physicality of having the shifts or having some type of scheduling, it's better to have uh, your own staff to try to, okay, you have full-time staff and you have a part-time staff, and let them really work together and, and train together and learn the town and understand the town and give it what it needs. And um, the part-time officers, have always been able to be a great cushion, but going forward, if we're not able to um, hire more part-timers, we're gonna have to start looking into what type of police department does the town want. Mm -hmm. Do they still want a 24-7 police department, 
where some towns out there will do 16 or 18 hours. Uh, do they, if they want that full-time department, or even if they want the, the an 18-hour department, some some departments already have the same amount of officers that we have, uh, and we do a 24/7 department. Um, so that's something that the town will have to look at. You know, you know, having a full-time certified staff to be able to work 24/7 and respond to the calls as needed is uh, a, a it's a luxury that a citizen in this town would like to have and maintain. And if that's what they still want, we'll have to keep that up. Okay, great, yeah. thank you. Crystal? I'm good, thank you. Jeff, do you want to say anything? I'm really looking forward to coming aboard here in Sunderland. Um, you know, I grew up in Deerfield. Um, I've dedicated the majority of my professional life to serving the public, whether it's been my years of law enforcement, or I was working for Deerfield, Deerfield Rescue in South County when I became, you know, South County, and you know, um, you know here I am today, and you know, really looking forward to getting started. Are you planning on maintaining your EMT license, or? It's actually expiring this year. I haven't done my comments. Um, you know, I, well, where I was Lots of reasons. in Labrador, I didn't get you know. I know the town offers stipends and stuff like that. I, you know, I wasn't got that. In my yeah. other department, um, you know, if that was an option, I don't plan on working on an ambulance service again. Uh, so, you know, I'll got to keep my requirements as an officer. So I will, you know, keep up the first responder. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a motion? I motion we accept the appointment of Jeff Belanger. Seconded. A okay, uh, motion made and seconded to appoint Jeff Blanger as a uh, full-time sworn officer in the town of Sunderland. Any discussion? We not hear any discussion. All those in favor of appointment of Jeff, please signify by saying aye. 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 Congratulations, Jeff. Three zero, Jeffrey. Yep. Um, so since we're on the topic, do you also want to appoint him as an alcohol enforcement officer yeah. and an election worker? Thank you. Yes, yes we would. Oh, I'm sure he'd love those additional <laughs> appointments. Okay, I motion we also appoint him as election worker and alcohol enforcement officer. Is that what it is? Seconded. And you're you're not a, you're not able to make a comment on this one, Jeff, because it's okay. just so all those any discussion? Here on no discussion, all those uh, in favor of appointing Jeff as an election and Alcohol enforcement, please signify by saying aye. 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 How's that? Three zero. Thank you. Congratulations, Jeffrey. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Stay safe. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Chief, nice seeing you again. Seeing you guys. I'll be right up. I'll be back. So I'll be the uh, office Thank you very much. Okay. Next up, appointment of uh, John Skrabitsky is a Highway laborer. George? Yeah, I'd like to recommend hiring John Skrabisky. Uh, he worked for me part time years and years ago when his father worked here. Uh, he's a really good, good worker and you know, he's been on board. Questions? You did a thorough background check on this thorough. guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, John, thank you for. Uh, your application, good luck. All those in favor of appointment of, do we have any other things that we want to appoint John as also dog catcher? Uh, snow plower. Snow uh, plower. part of the job. Uh, ditch digger, fence viewer, anything else? George. Okay. <laughs> All around. All those in favor of. Uh, do we have to motion or just? I, I was going to say that. Oh. So we don't have anything else? No. All right. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to appoint John Skrabitsky as highway laborer. I motion we appoint John Skrabitsky as a highway laborer. Seconded. Okay, motion made and seconded to appoint John as Sunderland highway laborer. Any further discussion? Without hearing any discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Last time to back out, John. Nope. Aye. <laughs> Uh, three zero as appointment for John. Congratulations, John. Thank good luck. You. Thank you, guys. George, thank you. Thank you. You look at you got a good crew, John. 
Tyrannically approved, John. Yes, we did. Okay, next up. I need. Did you guys get your uh, brisket and burnt ends? No, oh, burnt maybe ends. Maybe we should table this for a couple mm. weeks then, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have a, a Bub's Barbecue Change Hand. Andrew is now before us. He's requesting a liquor license hearing, entertainment license, jukebox license. So at this time, you have the, uh, did you have to put the notice in the paper? Yes. Okay. So I'd like to open the uh, liquor license hearing. That was scheduled for 640, so we can start with a little after that. So Jeff, if you could start. Um, yep, so uh, as you mentioned, Bob's Barbecue has uh, changed ownership. Um, Mr. Garlow is seeking an all alcohol license, uh, liquor license, um, and then live entertainment uh, license Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, um, and uh, jukebox license. I think that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, notice of the hearing was published in the paper with sufficient notice. Um, a butters received notice as well. Um, and we, we have proof of that. So um, we reached out to relevant departments um, and there were no concerns about the liquor license um, and just general awareness, uh, emphasizing the awareness of the community with, with live entertainment that it hasn't happened there before. And so um, be conscious that the neighbors, it might be new for them. I think that, that that was the comment that I heard. Okay, so Andrew, um, so we are the LLC, the local licensing, but we really don't have, I mean, we have, just so you know, um, if there's, at times we do send the police or the local group will put out and look for underage drinking and, and all that kind of stuff and we have a pretty we have a policy that we're pretty strict with so you know that's one thing that we frown on um, um, it's and it's all basically set in stone what we do so you can plead the mercy but our, our mercy is pretty um, any you have any comments about yeah. Person at his attorney, Christy Bodine. Um, per the ABCC, this is a kind of a complicated application because of the transactions that they need for you to approve. So it's a it's a change of category. It's a tra actually a transfer of the previous license, which had been a beer and wine license first. Then it's a change of that license to be an all alcohol license. You also need to approve the change of the officers and directors, even though the sale has already taken place. You need to approve the change of the stockholder interest, um, the expansion of premises because the outdoor cat area was not previously part of the licensed premises, and we're asking for that to be included within the licensed premises now. And we're also asking to change the manager to be Andrew. So, it's it's kind of a it's a multi-part thing because of the way the ABCC looks at these these transactions. Um, I've spoken to Andrew and he's gotten tips certification and he will make sure that anybody that's serving alcohol, if the license is approved, will be also tips certified so that they'll have pro proper training and in, in checking IDs and service of alcohol. We've also discussed he and I. Um, really the necessity of purchasing a pretty sophisticated ID checking uh, system. There's some fake IDs are very, very sophisticated these days, as you may or may not know. So there's some software and some equipment that, that's available that actually gets updated regularly to help facilitate for us checking IDs and making sure that underage drinkers are, are staffed um, you know, to the extent that they possibly can be um, to hold hopefully not have any, any issues with that going forward in the future. So, and uh, the application is got all the requisite documents in it, I think. Um, 
just wanted to present that. And if you have any other questions, go ahead. Yeah, there's there's nothing easy when you deal with the ABCC. They're it's just plain and simple. It, and 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 I guess there's there's a reason for that. I mean, I guess so. I mean, we and the thing is, we can find that your personal good good background and stuff, but they could. You know, they do a further check. Go, they they may disagree with what we say. And so, Jeffrey, you you have uh, the everything that we need to vote on. Yep. Okay. Um. So, you want to sum up what we're looking to do? So, the first thing is that we need to vote on the transfer of the uh, wine, the beer and wine license, right? Um, do, do you know if they have to take individual votes or just... They don't have to take individual okay. votes. In fact, in terms of saving verbiage, what you could do is vote to approve the application and the transactions that were submitted. And that would encompass everything. You don't need to take a separate vote. So, so, ba basi so basically what's being done is that at present, there's a beer and wine license and what you're looking is for a full liquor license. When it's all said and done, you're looking for a full liquor license. And we have that license available. Yes. Right? Yep. So we are limited in the number of life, full liquor licenses that, that are available. So if, if we grant this, what would number of liquor licenses be allowed? Um, so these are on-premise liquor licenses. One, two, I think that would be three. So. I th I think there would be two left. I think that's right. I think I checked with the with you guys before I filed this. Yeah, and there would be two still available. Yeah. And then there, there would become a beer and wine only license available because that would be being switched. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so I just this is the first time we did that. This for Nathaniel and Crystal. So I just we want to just so so basically the first thing we need to do is for the approval of the application. So are we all done entertaining information for that? Because the next the next ones are our licensing that we should is going to ha happen outside of the liquor license. Correct. Okay. So at this time are there is it is there any more information? Does anybody want to add anything to Nathaniel? Oh uh, just one question on the outdoor patio area you're talking about. Um, is that going to be closed off from the public except it's accessible through the the premises, or is there going to be? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm installing a gate and uh, a gate on the other side too, because there's that step down. Where yeah. The back of this plot up, so there's a little gap there, so I'm gonna get that fenced in. Okay, great. This is gonna be a controlled area, so people yeah. won't be able to just wander. You know, so it's gonna be fenced. I, I mean, yeah. so so part part of the part of the. Um, documentation. There has to be an identified fenced controlled area that has to be able to be maintained and th and that's going to be done that's on the application and I believe that's in the yeah in the little map at the very very last page of the application there's a yeah there's a, a, a little plan of how that's going to work okay what are you anticipating your hours of operation same hours the uh, 4 p.m. so Wednesday through Friday, 4 p.m. until uh, 8 p.m. You may want to ask for the license to be for more days and more hours in case you want to expand. Oh, yeah. because they have to assign the dates and hours when they sign the license. So if you wanted to go seven days or you wanted to go different hours, now is the time to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So so ty so Andrew, just typically, um, you would ask for whatever you. I mean, we close at. We have a closing time of one one yeah. one a, so, and and it also about serving on Sundays also, is that separate or is it still separate? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Are you looking for Sunday also? Yeah. I would say. Okay. Eleven a.m. to one a.m. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't have to serve during that whole time. Yeah. Okay. It gives you the opportunity if you want to be open that much. Yeah. Rather than having to come back. And so I think okay, so 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 if you could let us know what your hours of operation, and that's not in the application, correct? That's right. It's separate. So it's a decision that you all make 
Yeah. As you issue the license, but or, I, it's usually part of the hearing, though. Yeah. But so, so what what would your hours of operation? I think you were open for 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. seven days a week. That would be the maximum. Okay. So, and we'll discuss this in a second. But do you have any questions about that? So, so currently, you're just to clarify. Currently, you're you're looking for normal sort of di dinner hours, but leaving the door open for if you decide to do a nightclub at night or something or like that. Lunch. Or, yeah. or lunch. Or yeah, or lunch. Or okay. Lunch yeah. Days. Okay. But yeah. That makes sense. Great. I'm good. I apologize. Some of these documents are yeah. slow opening. <laughs> How many parking spaces are there there currently? I know it's not a huge parking no. area, so that's. Let me do the count. Let me see. I assume you get 25 to 30. Yeah, I was going to say 30 would be yeah. a good estimate, yeah. And I don't think you've got plans for a nightclub. No, no. no. I, like, I like to be home by 9 o'clock at night. It's very nice. The restaurant industry is very tough to get those kind of days. Yes. <laughs> I worked for years as the. Uh, as a, head bouncer for Carmelina's on the Commons down in Hadley, okay. yep. which was a restaurant that tried to do a nightclub at night. Yep. And uh, I know all about the trying to do both is, yeah. I, don't, I, don't want to go I, I wouldn't wish that on yeah. anyone. <laughs> no, I like my sleep. Yep. Okay. Um, so you got that? They're looking for 11 to one. 11 to one, seven days a week, yep. Okay, anything else? I questions? have more questions, I'm good. Any other testimony? Chief, you want to add anything? Uh, no, the, the only other thing I wanted to bring up was related to the uh, cone off area, the uh, patio area, uh, about there being, um, I know it's going to try to put in a fence and get all that stuff situated, but um, the current setup is people come in and go in through that side door. Uh, what type of enforcement would you guys have or checks and balances to make sure that people aren't bringing who's out to so with that side, I'm going to get rid of people entering in, in and out from that area because I'm trying to get the front door to be the main entrance now. And then we're going to have, um, um, I got Chad, who's going to be walking the premises to make sure everyone's going straight and narrow. But yeah, I don't want, I don't like having that side entrance. Like, and it's, it's tough for a handicap to get it too. At least in the front door, we have the ramp, so I'm going to put a new door on. Okay. So, so what, what, what I'm, I'm probably going to say later on is that we'd, we'd want we'd want the chief and his uh, to go down and and um, make sure it conforms. Sure. Okay. We're pro I'm probably going to say that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Hear no other comments. We'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. I motion we close the hearing. Seconded. Okay, motion made, second to close. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, three zero closing the to close the public hearing. Now, any discussion about the license? I think we covered everything I wanted to know about. I'm good. So this is on the liquor license. This is right? on the liquor license. Not the entertainment. Um I'm good. All set? Daniel? Jeff, how do you want the uh, motion? You want, how do you want the motion to read? Um, I move to approve the application for an all alcohol license as presented. Okay. My motion we and all other transactions. transactions contained in the application. I motion we accept the liquor. I'm going to say it again, Jeff, because I'm. All uh, transactions associated with the application and the liquor license change. Seconded. For discussion. So that's not specifically discussing the entertainment license. Yeah, and not the jukebox. Okay. Okay. So motion made and seconded. All those in favor, and this is just on liquor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, three zero, Jeff. We'll probably be here again. <laughs> I'm sure ABC will find something that needs to be a, yeah. All right, so entertainment license. 
So yeah, what do you got? Entertainment license. Uh, in the application, it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, noon to 10. Um, expected attendance of 50 to 100 people. Um, is it correct that it's only under the tent that you'd be having? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, the entertainment. Yeah, um, space inside to fit. Even an acoustic guy. Yeah, it's pretty it's tight at yeah. the tables. Um, <laughs> live band, DJs. What kind of shows? Well, I was thinking trivia. Something like that. Um, nothing really. May I encourage you to try karaoke? You could use some karaoke in town, just saying. So, I had to think about karaoke <laughs> because I, when I, on Wednesdays when I'm driving home, I see that the O's is, has a line yeah. out and around, and I'm like, all right, so people actually enjoy karaoke around here because I've done it before, and I get no one to show up. So karaoke so, is very popular around here, especially with the, the college students. Well, that's my worry. I bring in the karaoke and I bring in the, more the college crowd that would be a little more tempting. So that is I'm kind of like on the fence. I'll try it out and see. But I think karaoke underneath the tent would be fun. Yes. Yeah. And full, full disclosure, I have a conflict of interest in, in so much as I want to do karaoke with my kids again. And it's been a real hard <laughs> pandemic for a couple of years. So full disclosure. So, so a couple of concerns. Cheap um, parking. On 116, getting in and out, what do you think? So at one point, there was a, a large gathering there where the traffic was in the breakdown lane. And as you know, you can't park on the state highway. So they'll, they'll have to uh, understand that the uh, parking should only be contained within the facility and not on the state highway. Yeah, the center of the yes. Moving like, the business for the day. <laughs> But yeah, I gotta, so, I just don't think I like the park a lot better. Um, there is that grass, like, easement there, area there. Is that going to be able to be used for parking there or not at all? Uh, I don't have the, the, the map in front of me as far yeah. as who owns that, but I know a, a, a Mass General Alarm or Mass CMR discusses no parking on a state numbered highway. Okay. You have to be under land. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Your lease property, so we're in that. So you'll have, pull, you'll have to police that or monitor it yeah. pretty carefully. Now, the fact that we really put like cones, or is it no, nothing, no objections or objects on the highway? I mean, you could probably put up signs in the grass, okay. uh, no parking, um, but at some point, uh, the Sunderland police will be uh, checking on that area, and if there are parking, they'll either be ticketed and towed or asked to move. Okay. Uh, as well as the numerous amount of state troopers that drive up and down once Oh yeah. yeah. They're well aware of the, uh, the regulations. And, and my only concern also, my second concern is that there's still, the entertainment's going to be outdoors, right? Yeah. You have neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. So I've taken that into account. Um, we won't be doing anything later than the 9 o'clock at night. Um, the sound guy they have, um, the musician that's on hand is a single acoustic guy who has a decibel reader um, and won't go above the 45 decibels for an outside venue. Um, and especially inside that area, we have some sound blocking stuff with the hedges, and now I put the walls on the, mm -hmm. the tent itself, so that'll help out keep this, the noise down. Yeah, and, and so I would be concerned about noise. Well, in the town, Sunderland Town Bylaw, I think it's 89 1, uh, does not have a time reference. I noticed uh, that. Disturbing the peace does, yeah. but uh, the bylaw is 24 7, theoretically. Okay. Okay. So. If there's no decibel, some towns have a decibel limit specified for entertainment within their bylaws, and I couldn't find that here. But there's some communities that say the decibels can't be above XYZ at a distance of. Mm -hmm. certain number of feet from mm -hmm. a property line and I talked to him about trying to comport with that vis-a-vis -vis the way the other towns do it so that it's not a problem he doesn't want to have two with the neighbors obviously. See the only problem with decibels is that it's who's taking the reading and what equipment to, yeah. and, and you and, and so our our bylaws was more of a common sense mm -hmm. bylaw. Yeah. Um and and unfortunately I've been involved with decibel readings before and and yeah. every everybody can take a meter and means different things. So, yeah. so ours is more of a common sense approach. 
I, I would be, just to let you know, that there are neighbors um, not too far away, and it's all pretty much flat, so the sound can travel quite a distance. So we're going to have to be careful there. Any questions? Mm, not really the time. So do you want to limit your outside entertainment to 9 o'clock then, p.m.? So that's yeah. outside entertainment, but that doesn't stop 45 people from sitting under the tent, drinking beer, hooting and hollering, and having a good time, right? Yeah. That's and that turns into crowd control at that point. Yeah. It does, yeah. but it's the fact that you got a license till one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I I understand today I I'm not trying to be miserable here. I'm just saying I understand today you're saying your intent isn't past yeah. nine or ten o'clock, but if we're gonna give you a liquor license till one AM Oh, no, what fine. stops that from okay. happening, you know, until 1 a.m., a whole bunch of people sitting out there? I mean, for for what it, uh, Bubs isn't a place to really hang out. It's more of a grab-and-go. Well, today I mean, it isn't, right? You're you're well, looking I'm, to expand this. Yeah, just, I mean, not to make it a bar scene, crowd, where people are going to get um, drunk and hang out and be rowdy and loud. It's, it's a starting place. It's the place where people go, they eat. Have a couple beers and then they leave by eight nine o'clock at night. I don't want to expand the hours any later for that, just because of my own sanity yep. and my own sake. Um, and also, I mean, at this point in time, and it may grow, but I don't want to go past nine ten o'clock at night. And then I have no fear of kicking people out of a restaurant or out of my space. So, unfortunately, Andrew, what we have to what what we're what we need to do is not just look at you, but who may follow you, because yeah. the the license the license will you know be there, and so we have to look long term as well. So mm -hmm. we have to be careful. Um, you weren't when were you, when were you planning on um, starting the entertainment portion of your business later on this year or springtime? Um, so I was hoping to have some live music um, in the next few weeks or so. Just to test the water, see how it is. But once it gets cold out, I won't be doing anything really under the tent for any kind of entertainment, really. Right. Um, so it'll probably be like spring time. Um, you can put conditions on the entertainment license, too, right? I mean, it's similar to like a zoning yeah. permit. I would think you could specify. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm wondering, Jeff, can, can you and the chief take a trip down there and 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 report back to us on that and and just so maybe just postpone the entertainment portion of it until we get an understanding about how it's going to be set up you know the 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 setup of it so we can actually view it yeah. and 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 that's kind of what we did when we when we looked at the 70s when they first they put that out, outdoor patio it will yeah, it's called O's now, right? I think it is. But that's that's kind of how we did back then. Is also is, is get an understanding. So maybe um, um, if it's okay with you, Andrew, just so we can have an understanding of of what exactly to, what we see as potential problems, so that we can yeah. address those issues before yeah, they happen. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. So right now we'll we'll table the entertainment and we'll report back from the chief and Jeff on that. Um, the jukebox, simple jukebox inside. Yeah, it's been there since the 70s. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem with that at all. Jukebox are great. Okay. Okay. You just want a simple vote on that, jukebox? I motion we accept the application for the jukebox, application, licensing, whatever it is. Okay. Seconded. Motion made and second on the jukebox license. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Whew, two out of three. Look at that. Not bad. Can we get a date for the entertainment license decision? Is that possible at this point or is it too early? 
we say two weeks? Um, yeah, we could we could put it on the agenda. I think that's the two weeks. Seventeenth would be the next one. Yeah, yeah. ten seventeen. Does that give you enough time? October seventeenth. I won't yeah. be here. So that works good for you guys. Right? <laughs> um, it, it gives me. Yeah, I, I, we can get down there pretty quick. Um, do you want to put it to the twenty fourth? Okay. Twenty fourth. Yep. Okay. Okay. And Andrew and I are going to talk about how to make a brisket too. So. <laughs> Burnt ends are my favorite. All right, good. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, before you leave, Andrew is a new owner of Bub's Barbecue. Andrew, we allow all business owners to make a uh, year on TV. You get to do a commercial for Bub's Barbecue. Tell us why. Tell us why we should go to Bub's Barbecue. Well, so we all know Bub's Barbecue has been there since 1979. It's been there forever. It's a staple in Sutherland. Um, I think the last few years it has come kind of as the usual spot, it's always been there. Um, so what I'm trying to do is bring it back to life and rejuvenate it a little bit. Um, right now, all our produce is all locally sourced from the area. The wood is locally sourced. Um, we use, I mean, I drive around town all day long picking up potatoes, tomatoes, corn, uh, firewood, everything from A to Z, and then, um, doing events. So on October 14th, we are doing a pumpkin carving event for the kids. I'm buying two, bun, uh, two bins of pumpkins from Warner Farm. And for $15, kids come down, get a pumpkin, get a free kids meal, and they can make a mess all over Bubs on the outside tent, carve the pumpkin, I give them a votive, and they can take them all. Um, and then down the road, we're doing Thanksgiving meals, so ready to eat meals that you can take and worry about cooking for your family. Um, we do cater, um, try and expand the catering business out, um, doing office parties, holiday parties, any kind of event. Um, and expanding my huh? huh? To find my end meetings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> town meetings, town hall meetings, what they all um, Lunch for town meetings. Yeah. 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 And then getting the name Buzz out there again. Um, I'm a part of the Holyoke State Fire State Parade Committee, so I'm going to be doing some events with them and bring more tourism to Sunderland. Um, they just so they give you they give you the uh, sauce recipe. They did. That's good. I say it's already locked in the head already. I can do it from scratch now. Just remember it. Yeah. I was always wondering about that. That was their forte. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, wish you luck, Andrew. Good yeah. luck, man. Oh. Tough bit. <laughs> tough business. It's pit man. Business, Being a pit so. master is tough business. Oh, yeah. Be like Aaron Franklin, huh? What did he tell me? He told me a hundred and he does hundred and forty briskets a day. I'm wishing to get to that. that amount. <laughs> I think we're doing like four to five right now. I do about three racks of ribs though. And and he uses post oak. And I asked oh, okay. him. And I asked why, and he says it's the only thing that he can be assured of because he, like I was telling you before, eight cords of wood a week. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of wood. He's only six. <laughs> yeah. Six pieces. Six yeah. pieces. All right. All right. I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Good Thank luck, you Andrew. Much. Bless you. Guys. Hope you the best. Give you the best. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. You all say what you want the rest of it? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chief. Right Thanks, Chief. Thank you very much, Chief. Hey. Ben, are you in dairy stair? We'll go on to uh, school updates. We are. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hello, school. Ben, how you doing? Great. How are you doing? Excellent. What are you going to tell us? Well, uh, funny. The uh, school year is off to a really great start. It's, uh, this year at Sunderland, we have right around 187 students. That's pre K through six. And that number has remained somewhat positive over the past few years. Uh, as you're aware, we had our uh, early childhood playground project uh, going on, and it is fully operational, um, we're excited to say. And just uh, 
a couple of weeks ago, the poured in place rubber surfacing was installed and that was to be really the final portion of the project. Uh, we had so many different local businesses and town departments that helped make this happen. And I would like to publicly recognize those now. Um, so first we received a few years ago, seed funding from the community preservation committee. Um, and that helped us get the site analysis taken care of and the conceptual design. From there, we did some minor fundraising. We were able to bank um, some portion of the, uh, the money towards the project, project but they needed more. Um, so we went back to the town of Sutherland and the CPC and uh, acquired additional Community Preservation Act funds um, that was approved by, by our community members. And, and now we were rolling. Um, so the CPC, other town departments helped out, our school committee, the select board, the town highway department played an absolutely integral role in really getting us going. Um, we saved a lot of money um, through the site demo. Um, and thanks, that was thanks to town uh, school parent volunteers and also the town highway department. And they really helped out a ton. And then from there, we had our PTO help out. We had community member donations. The Sunderland classes of 2019 20 and 21 donated funds. The Daniela Zim Memorial Fund um, helped out. Delta Sandy Gravel helped All States Materials Group Charitable Fund. Tearsarge Energy, USA Waste and Recycling, the Home Depot Foundation, Northampton Pediatric Dentistry, and the B. Gory Fabrication Company. So all those different businesses provided um, whether it was material donations or equipment or uh, in-kind labor. The, the playground is um, being used daily now. So our preschool and kindergarten students are, are absolutely loving the space. And I think you forgot that that one person, and that would be Principal Barczewski yourself. Uh, Ben's been the driving force behind this for years, getting this thing going. Um, it was is the main force that got all those different donors to step up to the plate and really probably fund this the most diversified way that I've ever seen a project funded you know, so many different ways and so many um, different methods to bring the price down and make it affordable um, and make it happen. So I just want to tip my hat to you, Ben, in a public meeting as well. And I'll keep doing that because you did such a wonderful job with that. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Superintendent Modesto, that's uh, a good point. Ben, you, uh, it had been easy to give up a long time ago on that project. I think I, uh, I must have talked to you, what, three or four times at uh, CPA meetings, at Selectman meetings, another three or four times. And uh, I think when you first started, the, uh, the kids that was meant for are probably now in wheelchairs. So uh, it's been, it seems like it's been that long. So you're, you're very much so be commended for uh, the tenacity to, to follow through a project and I think it so so Ben originally when you came to us what four or five years ago you were at like uh, a 2013 yeah like I said four or five decades ago <laughs> yeah. um, you were you were talking about a four hundred thousand dollar project um, so we could probably say it was four hundred thousand back in 2013. Now we're seven, eight, nine, ten years later. So that's 400,000 is probably more like 800,000. So what was your final total price on your project that you were able to out of pocket, out of pocket money? So I can um, pull that up momentarily, but I, I'm guessing it was probably around um, 300. $50,000 or so. And, uh, but we should also know that from the original cost estimate, mater materials um, definitely went up. And um, so we had to work around that as well. And so and part of that included um, mixing and matching pieces of equipment um, to make the project 
project affordable. So in total, we're probably looking at um, 300, around 340,000 or so. So again, that was in 2013, you said it was gonna cost us $400,000 as a low estimate. Um, so Darius, I think uh, your point is well taken. If it wasn't for Ben and his, uh, his team, um, that job could probably easily cost $600,000 or more. So Ben, nice and, job, very nice thank job. You. And I also want to re really thank our our, our community, um, the businesses that donated, and especially our the townspeople who voted to make this happen. Um, the, the town has, through the playground, whether it's CPA funds or capital projects, um, it would be interesting to um, put together a summary of how much the school itself has received um, outside of the yearly annual budgets to keep the place running. And a lot of that uh, comes from the support of the town. So we're, we're pretty fortunate to be where we are. So, so Ben, have you been able to uh, bring that playground into your curriculum, to use it in the curriculum now? We have. So the, the playground features 10 raised bed stock tank planters. And we had a, a donation from a local farm. So right now there's um, mums in, the, um, in those raised bed planters. But we, we do have a pretty uh, avid gardening group. Uh, on staff and we have a, a back vegetable garden and so now we'll have one in the front as well and that will be part of the early childhood curriculum another pretty cool feature of the playground includes a, a biking path and we are using some of the funds or we did use some of the funds to purchase strider bikes so those are bikes without training wheels and without pedals and it's it's the new way to go in, in terms of teaching kids how to ride a bike. And so we purchased around uh, nine of those. And so that's a, an active part of um, the student space as well, learning how to, how to balance. And then the transition from that to an actual pedal bike is much easier. Excellent. Uh, Crystal, Nathaniel, questions, comments? Um, no, just wanted to you know, echo everyone thanking Ben for all the hard work he's done on this. And I really appreciate everything you do. Yeah, great job. Peter? Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, I, I would just like to add my thanks to Ben because he really has been the, the force that has made this thing happen. And it's, it's been a long time, and he has had times when he might have gotten discouraged, but every time I've seen Ben and talk about this, it's like he's been positive and he's been working and he's been making progress. And it is, I drove by there this afternoon to have a, have a look at it. It looks wonderful. Um, ben, it's an awesome job you've done for, for the school and also for the community. Um, the other thing I'd just like to mention is that, uh, you know, we're sitting here talking about it tonight and um, with all the things that happen at the school, there's there, you know, there these days at least there is now an active role played by the select board too in terms of, um, you know, the, both the support you give and the knowledge you bring and stuff like that. And this is the school's a big part of the town, and um, you know, once again, I'll just say we really appreciate uh, the involvement of you, Tom, and your board in, in terms of, of helping the school be as good as it can be. Um, Peter and I, Peter, we did, we discuss it. At our last meeting, um, that of the and and this is a reflection upon the members of the school committee for understanding the importance of communication, but also it goes to administration, Darius and Ben and Sunderland, in particular, about the uh, level of trust that's been developed uh, through the through Darius's administration and Ben's administration at the elementary school. And that, that really that really speaks volumes about the two gentlemen that we're talking to tonight, Peter. It, uh, it goes back to Darius and and Ben. And and basically there was a there's and you see it all the time. 
um, when we, t we talk about this year, there was return back from Sunland Elementary School, like $3,000 or Frontier, $3,000. And while it may not, when you're looking at an $8 million budget, $3,000 doesn't seem like a lot of money, but it's the integrity of the staff, the administration, that looks at the budget and understands that that $3,000 means a lot to the town. Um, that I, in 23 years, have never seen before. And, and, that, and that really speaks volumes of the present administration. And I just want to thank, so that we, our board of select, our select board now, feels like that we really are a team, that we're all pulling, we're all pulling in the same direction and we're all pulling for the same thing. Peter? Yeah, just one other thing is I sit here and look in from my computer at uh, the picture of all the people here at this, at this meeting and, and there's one person that happens to be in the corner of my screen, but he sure is central these days and that's your town administrator, Jeff. Um, because I have noticed over certainly time since he's been here that a number of times I would ask, okay, you know, talking to Darius or Shelley or Ben or something, have you talked to Jeff at Town Hall, okay, to make sure we're coordinating and make sure that, you know, everybody's in the loop and so on. And I've noticed, like, you know, certainly, you know, very early on I was noticing that all the time there was an email, like, coming to us about some issue or something like that, Jeff was being copied on it, okay? And I had asked Shelley, you know, are you, have you run this, whatever, all the stuff we were dealing with COVID and different funding things and all this sort of stuff. And Jeff was there um, playing a big role in making sure that, that we, uh, you know, we got things that we were entitled to get and that the, we followed the rules and that there was just co good coordination all around. And, and uh, I, I just want to say he's, he's been great and we really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. Nice job. <laughs> all right. Ben, dare you say anything more? So the 187 students, is that uh, pretty much where you projected? Um, you know, we do have a, a bunch of move-ins that happen uh, during, at the end of the school year and over the summer months. So it's, it's right around the mark. Um, Good. You know, we have two very full preschool classes uh at 13 apiece right now not all sunderland residents um but that number is higher than it has been the past past few years and right now we have uh two classrooms at every grade level minus second grade which has one one section so what what do you have for what do you have for enrollment last year you remember offhand 83 so you're you're so we actually increased uh, our enrollment this year? Yeah, I mean, it's right about one eight, we're up, we're up four, according to, depending on when you pull the number from, but if you do October 1 to October 1. Huh. So we're kind of, uh, we're swimming against the tide compared to the rest of Franklin County then, huh? With our enrollment going up. Okay. Jeffrey, anything? No, I would just, echo what Peter said and, and say it's easy when you have good partners to partner with people and collaborate so um. well at least we're in the same ballroom you know and, and that's important that that's it is important and again we don't have to agree on everything but as long as we know that we're there and we can have a discussion and that's that's the most important thing all right Crystal Nathaniel all set all set okay we're all set thank you guys thank, thank you man. Darius thank you Ben Ben, Thank nice you. job. Thank you all very much. Nice job, Thanks, Ben. Have a great night. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Select board updates. I got nothing. Okay. Nathaniel? I'm good. Uh, a couple things. The uh, uh, South County Senior Center um, Administration Building is now in Sunderland. It's over at, for those old-time residents, would you remember it as the Koalix Package Store. 
Um, most recently, it was uh, T Trekkers. T Trekkers place, um, but they are over there. And according to Jennifer Remillard, who is the uh, senior center director, um, they're going to be uh, opening up a few uh, different programs um, in the building. Um, so as we get more information becomes available, we will we will share that with with everyone. Um, so th that there may be more senior activities there very very shortly. Uh, the second thing is Thursday night we have a Franklin Regional Council of Government meeting, um, and they should be presenting or very close to presenting their budget. I don't see what's happening there. I'm sorry, Tom. What was the date again? Franklin Council Regional Government. What date, though? Huh? Which Thursday. 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 Okay, Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Jeffrey, we just got some news from FERCOG about how they lost a member. Yes, a uh, transportation planner passed. Maureen. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Maureen was a. Maureen was a. Uh, did many projects in Sunil with a. Uh, um, streetscapes and the North North Main Street, and she's very very active in Sunland over the last ten or t ten years or so, um, and expressed our our condolences to her family and and the Furcog, and this actually happened pretty quickly, um, so we um, it, that'll be a loss up there that they'll have to to gear up for. And the other thing is that the the town of Sunderland lost the last few days a member of our um, zoning board of appeal um, businessman in town for, for a long time. Barry Tozlowski passed away um, latter part of last week. Um, Barry was on the zoning board for for a long, long time, probably 20 plus years, easily. Um, he used to own Ben Service Station in town that's now Wild Roots. Um, so Liz and, and his family would like to offer the condolences to the, the family in the time. Um, Jeff? Town administrator updates? Um, a couple of things that maybe we can do now or, or we can do offline if you don't want to do it now. Um, scheduling the tax classification hearing. The assessors are meeting on the 17th, but if you're not going to be there, I would suggest maybe the 24th. Okay. And then we also have a request for a poll hearing. Is it okay if I schedule those and yep. this on the 24th, is the yep. entertainment license? Okay. Um, and then we will have a meeting before this, but uh, early notice for parents and younger folks who are into trick-or-treating. Um, the police force will be out um, for safety and traffic reasons on the evening of the 31st, which I believe is a Monday from 5.30 to 7.30. So if people are wondering um, when when the police are gonna be out to help with street crossings and things like that, um, make sure everybody's okay. It will be on the 31st. Um, and the last thing is um, I just got notice that uh, a potential appointment to the village center committee of a business representative. Um, I, I had the person's interest and I just got confirmation from the chair, one of the chairs of the village center committee. Um, so I don't know if you want to take this opportunity to appoint uh, Kyle Snow of Sugarloaf Gardens as a business representative to the village center committee. Kyle Snow? Yes. Motion? I have motion. He's one of the Snow and Sons sons, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I motion we appoint Kyle Snow to the Village Center Committee. Seconded. Motion made, second. Discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor, appointment of Kyle Snow to the Village Center Committee signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Great. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, 
Okay. Sorry, one more thing. Uh, do we want to meet? So we're currently on a two every two week meeting schedule. Um, do you want to yeah, meet until next we, week, or do you want to schedule the next meeting for the twenty fourth, unless something? Comes the seventeenth. It sounds like we shouldn't bother meeting if, if Tom's not going to be here anyways. Let's not we'll go out of our way to schedule a meeting where we're not all here. So the question is, I guess, either are we meeting next week or just waiting three weeks? I would be fine with waiting three weeks unless you have something pressing coming up next week. I don't have anything pressing uh, coming up next week. Um, budgets will start soon enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say I would say one thing. I would start I would start preparing our letter, the memo. The memo. Usually that goes out the round. How, how's our uh, How's our certifications come along with free cash and stuff? Our our uh, Schedule C. They're coming along. Um, I am, let's see. I believe the last I heard, and that was, I know there, there was some work done over the weekend. As of last week, the cash book had been reconciled through February um, with the accountant. Once they finish that, they have to go back and reconcile it with the bank accounts, but that should be easier I'll take less time um, and the account side is going well so they're still hopeful that this month they'll be able to certify free cash um, but I'm meeting with uh, the FERCOG and the accountant on Thursday just to go over that timeline and get confirmation okay so I'll be at the FERC so if there's anything you want me to talk to the FERCOG about let him let me know would you please absolutely um, Okay. Anything else? Anything for the good of the town? Anything else? Okay, without hearing anything, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a motion we adjourn. Seconded. I have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, that's 3-0. Declare us out at 740.